Yes, I think so. So today, from today, we are starting our classes on international relations. I had earlier also done international relations uh, for the students of Mark Darshan when I had taken India and her neighbors. It is very important from all perspectives, especially from the perspective of paper two for all students and those students political science, that we should be aware about India's relation with the world. Having said that, I'm going to pick up two organizations today, give you a brief history about it, the present scenario as it continues. And from there, we will take on ASEAN and then India and her neighbors before going in for the big four, which is the United States of America, China, Russia, and the United Kingdom. And that is the, uh, the route that I would like to, to take. I'm sure there'll be other people who will share this burden with me. But of today, we are going to talk of Quad. Now, Quad is your quadrilateral security dialogue. I repeat, the quadrilateral security dialogue. A lot has been said about it when its first in-person summit took place on the 24th of September, 2021, in Washington, D.C., where Joe Biden, along with Sri Narendra Modi and the Australian Prime Minister, Joe Morrison, and uh, along with uh, the United States, the, the Australian uh, Prime Minister, and the Indian Prime Minister, who were present there, with the Japanese Prime Minister also being there. Quad has not been given the importance which is due to it, reason being that the idea of Quad or this quadrilateral security dialogue was first initiated in 2007 on the sidelines when we were having an ASEAN summit. And the idea was then mooted by the Japanese Prime Minister of, uh, of that time when he said, that there should be some kind of dialogue in the Indo-Pacific region. The Indo-Pacific region post-Cold War has attained an enormous importance. Reason being, $1.9 trillion dollars. I repeat, $1.9 trillion of trade, of trade from exclusively the USA. And this report is from the United Nations. $1.9 trillion trade all from the United States of America is going through the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. So therefore, it should be actually called the Asia-Pacific. And that is what it was referred to as earlier. But being the Indian Ocean and India's importance as being one of the biggest countries in this region, it is often referred to as the Indo-Pacific region. And when you are going to write, you're of course going to write that India is the most important country in this region after, after the other, other big country, which is China. To counter its effect, the Quad has come into existence. That, of course, is always there. But we will highlight its importance and go through it, the economic route. So when I say that 1.9 trillion U.S. trade is moving through the Indo-Pacific region, we can understand the kind of anxiety that the U.S.A. is going through and hence the in-person meeting on 24th September 2021. This is the first time that an in-person meeting of high-level officials that is the level one talk of dialogue. So dialogues can be 1.5, they can be one. Level one is when the heads of the countries meet in person, having unofficially met earlier, which is the 1.5 dialogue, uh, in which though no minutes are on. But in this case, there was a joint statement by all the four countries together. And I will be quoting those uh, minutes. I have taken, it, uh, taken this article 
from uh, the silk uh, root thread if you can uh, google you can read it from there there is an article from the times of india also and there is the official mea statement so whenever you are doing international relations no matter where you read from be always clear that the mea statement is read officially from the site so that you are correct on paper whenever you put your viewpoints now taking it forward this 1.9 trillion dollar us trade alone moves through the indo pacific region and the united nations claims that in the coming year 43% of exports and 38% of imports for the world for the world economy will be moving through the indo pacific region i repeat 43% of exports and 38% of the imports will be moving through the indo pacific region now if you want to draw a parallel before the cold cold war came into existence it was the atlantic region which was very important in terms of trade post cold war it became asia pacific and after the end of the cold war once the, the east china sea and the south china sea have gained the importance it has become the indo pacific region it is thought of by the countries other than china that india is a giant which can help to control and balance power in the indo pacific region particularly countries like japan which are threatened territorially by china australia which in terms of foreign international trade in 2018 took a stand against china had trade embargoes imposed against it and canberra suffered in trade because of that again in 2019 post covid situation australia made an unhealthy comment to the who asking it to investigate into the covid crisis as a result of china's uh, china's virus escaping into the world now these are few mistakes which have been made by australia and if you realize this year we have got a question on what is the australian the united nations and the us which is called the opcus this is a security strategic alliance please remember that opcus consists of australia the united nations and united states the chief primary purpose of opcus is to make australia nuclear armed so the supply of nuclear submarine by the united nations by the united kingdom and united states is what orcus is called about so that is now again an offshoot of quad thinking that quad can be the friendly face of the anti china block whereas orcus can be the security face of of the um, anti china block these are the two offshoots and the recent developments which have taken place so when quad was was thought of in 2004 it was said that we have to envision or we have to think of an inclusive prosperous open trade system in the indo pacific region and that was the reason why quad came into existence they said that we need a open we need an inclusive open inclusive free and prosperous trade system in the indo pacific region this was the idea in 2007 when the japanese prime minister had proposed the quad now if you look at japan japan is under threat from china these are the world four major maritime democracies who are forming the quad four major and this is the word you have to use mari they're not plain democracies they are the four major maritime democracies 
only idea that Japan had was that there should be an Asian arc of, and this is the word the Prime Minister has used, an Asian arc of democracy. An Asian arc of democracies in the Indo-Pacific region. Now, if you look at this, it just cannot be uh, Asian because U.S. is also part of it and U.S. has been the most important part of it. Reason being that U.S. has a lot, lot of angst against China and therefore it is a major uh, hurdle in, uh, in whatever China wants to do. So this is a kind of an alternative which it is framing up. Also because of the trade relations which are very important in the region and it is the part of the growing economy of the world why the Indo-Pacific region has become very important. But this was the thought process when the Japanese Prime Minister proposed Quad. It said that it is the four major maritime democracies that need to come together, that an Asian arc of democracy needs to be formed. It, of course, never mentioned as an anti-China bloc, but it was assumed that the word, the miniature word, use democracies, it means that it is a hegemony against the against uh, China and its allies. Now, the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo A. The Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo A. called the Quad as the as co called it the the diamond of security diamond of democratic diamond of security Please kindly note this. The democratic diamond of security is what he had envisaged for the Quad. Now, after 2007 and the first major naval exercise called Exercise Malabar, which took place in the Indian Ocean, there was a fallout because Australia refused to be a part of Quad, coming under tremendous pressure from China. So after 2007, there was a lull a decade of lull in court. It again assumed importance in 2017 when all the leaders of the four nations met in Philippines. Now, come to 2020. In 2020, the first joint naval exercise the first joint naval exercise called the Exercise Malabar was carried out by was carried out by India plus USA plus Australia. Australia also joined it. Australia has come back to Quad in 2017. USA plus Australia and of course Japan. Japan faces a major threat from China because of its territorial disagreement over its island properties in the East China Sea. Now what are these? These are your islands called the Spartley Islands. the Spartley Islands, then the Parcel, Parcel, then the Scar, Barrow, Shoal Island. The Scar, Barrow, Shoal. This is F-H-O-A-L. The Scar, Barrow, Shoal Island in the Gulf of, Gulf of Tonkin. Okay, so Japan and China, these were originally islands of Japan, but China is now uh, claiming this area 
as its own. So Japan feels threatened from China and looks up for democratic uh, solutions to security in the Indo-Pacific region. Come to the USA, the USA is under immense threat from China in terms of economic trade. Australia, I already mentioned, is facing embargoes from China because of certain foreign international trade laws, which it had suppressed in 2018. And then it's incorrect or a political, in political statement in 2019 regarding the COVID crisis about China has already threatened it. You come to India. India has several border disputes with China, both in the region of Tibet, in the region of Bhutan, in the region of Nepal, and therefore all its line of control are under not only threat, but disagreement with China. We will be going into the details and name-wise when we do Indochina. At present, it is sufficient to mention that Quad is formulated by world's biggest democracies who are in disagreement with one world power block. However, that alone is never mentioned in any of its official statements by Quad. You will just mention that this formulation is one. It is not a formal organization. And that is how you're going to define Quad. Quad is an informal organization. It is an informal organization. Point number one. Point number two. It is made up of maritime democracies of the world. Point number three. It has no permanent secretariat. It has no permanent secretariat in any part of the world. Nor does it have a layered organization. So no, I'm putting no separately for you so that you know what we are talking about. Whenever you will get a question, you will probably get a question about what are the security issues in the Indo-Pacific region? And when you're going to write that, you have to write about Quad. You will be writing about other things also, but you will specifically mention Quad. Quad has not assumed the importance except after to 2021, when its first formal summit has taken place. So you must understand that in the coming year, Indo-Pacific along with Quad will be very important. We just need to keep our eyes and ears open. Okay. So there is no permanent secretary for it. There is no layered organization like the UN. Like the UN. There is no layered organization like the UN. So it is not like the UN at all. It has no policy issues. No policy statements come from it. So simple, it's an informal organization of maritime micro democracies who have no permanent secretariat and no layers. And unlike the UNO, it does not issue any policy statement. It is also not like the NATO. Not like the NATO. So what happens in the NATO? NATO is a military or a strategic security organization or a security group. So unlike the NATO, there is no security perspective. There is no security perspective to what? So Quad was thought of by Shinzo Abe as being a free-floating organization of like-minded democracies in the Indo-Pacific region. So there are no security perspectives for Quad, but there are security, joint security exercises. Joint security exercises like Exercise Malabar of 2020. So it 
it has no policy statements but it believes in that it believes in expanding existing agreements it has no policy statement but it believes in expanding existing agreements and highlighting please use the same language and highlighting shared values so it has no policy formulation but it is expanding existing agreements between countries and highlighting shared values it has no security perspective like nato but unlike that it has a collective effort for defense exercises collective effort for defense exercises so there was first a virtual meet of quad leaders in march 2021 and then again there was a formal meet on 24th september 2021 in washington where all the four leaders met along with that the assumed importance of quad has resulted in what is called the quad plus after the formal meeting in 2021 there are other countries who would like to be a part of the quad which includes south korea new zealand and vietnam in its response to this cohesion china says that it is a 100% failure and the fact that it is going to fail and it has what is called the cold war mentality a cold war mentality is what china calls the quad and says that it is a 100% failure the quad leaders on their part make all kinds of statements for cooperation amongst themselves but never talk of an anti china stand these two facts you must mention when you write your answer now if you look at the washington post what does the washington post say are the objectives of quad first and foremost it says that there has to be a shared vision in the indo pacific region please you can write this there has to be a shared vision in the indo pacific region i hope i am not confusing you if i am it is the first class i'll uh, you can give your feedback to me i'll try and simplify it further but actually it's very simple there is nothing it's like a story you are you are talking about a group of four countries who are coming together they are kind kind of trying to huddle together pass pass aake koshish kar rahe hain ki hum kisi tarah se चाइना को हु विल जिसको क्वेश्चन कहते हैं ना हु विल बेल द कैप तो चाइना को कैसे काउंटर किया जाए यही चारों देशों की इसके इस पे चारों देश बात करते हैं पर वो पूरा खुल के बात नहीं कर पाते तो वो कैसे सर्कमसेंट करके आपस में डायलॉग क्रिएट करते हैं वो ही कहानी कोड की है तो सो डोंट गो बाय व्हाट इज द शेयर विजन एंड ऑल दिस this is only good english for that 150 words that you have to write or the 250 words if it is indo pacific so i'm giving you the good words just learn it by heart the rest you must understand ki char desh hain jo ki china se threatened hain aur wo apne apne tarike se usse jooj ya lad rahe hain aur wo kis prakar se vijay payenge wo hame aane wala samay batayega ye ekdam seedhi simple saral baat hai okay so what what the washington post or your washington post ki quote hai इसके इसमें कोई भी चीज गलत हो ही नहीं सकती तो दे से दैट द पर्पस ऑफ क्वाड इज अ शेयर विजन इन द इंडो पैसिफिक रीजन दैट इट शुड बी दैट इज फ्री दैट इज फ्री ओपन एंड इंक्लूसिव The words which I have used repeatedly, or you have heard, bar bar use, kijega. 
फ्री ओपन एंड इंक्लूसिव एक सौ पचास में बहुत बात तो नहीं यूज कर सकते बट फर्स्ट जो थ्री वर्ड होंगे वो आपका होगा मैरिटाइम डेमोक्रेसी फिर डेमोक्रेटिक डायमंड ऑफ सिक्योरिटी फिर तीसरा आपका ये वर्ड होगा फ्री ओपन एंड इंक्लूसिव इंडो पेसिफिक रीजन तो ये शेयर विजन है चारों देशों का कि हम सम्मिलित रूप से चाहते हैं कि यहाँ पर फ्री ओपन और इंक्लूसिव इंडो पेसिफिक रीजन होना चाहिए मतलब कि चाइना की थ्रेट नहीं होनी चाहिए दैट इज द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट दे वॉन्ट देन दे वॉन्ट दैट द ट्रेड श्योर शुड बी एक्सेसिबल एंड डायनेमिक With principles of freedom of navigation, the principles of freedom of navigation, principles of freedom of navigation should be governed by should be governed by international law. should be governed by international law that all disputes among countries that all disputes among countries all disputes amongst countries should be resolved through should be resolved amicably through dialogue अब ये क्यों कहा जा रहा है ये इसलिए कहा जा रहा है कि बार बार चाइना नॉर्थ कोरिया के साथ मिलके यहां पर मिलिट्री एक्सरसाइज करता रहता है तो जो मैरिटाइम सिक्योरिटी की थ्रेट है वो इतनी ओवर बेरिंग है इस वजह से इस पॉइंट को हाईलाइट किया जा रहा है दैट देर इज नो फॉर्म ऑफ कॉजन देर इज नो फॉर्म ऑफ कॉजन इन मैरिटाइम सिक्योरिटी इशूज इन द इंडो पेसिफिक region so what did so what did uh, uh, china say after that china what the, china's reaction was that the quad is a headline grabbing idea a 100% failure a headline grabbing idea and it put pressure on bangladesh not to join the quad if you look at the scenario then it is the south china sea and the east china sea which are causes of concern both for japan and the countries in and around it particularly japan and vietnam indonesia who face constant territorial threat from china australia too is feeling threatened by the chinese perspective because of the trade embargoes which have been forced on it now before going into india stand on the indo pacific just let us have a look that what was decided on the 24th of september when narendra modi yoshi haid suga i repeat yoshi haid suga and scott morrison met in washington dc i will write yoshi haid suga so that you don't get it get it incorrect so there was of course joe biden plus scott morrison plus yoshi haid suga ye aapka japan ho gaya ye aapka australia ho gaya ye aapka usa ho gaya and apna narendra modi shri narendra modi all these leaders met on the 24th of, of september 2021 and declared in their joint statement and i repeat this and read it together together we commit to promote free open rule based order in international law undaunted by coercion ab aap isme se aur kuch bhi cheez yaad mat rakhiye par ye line jaisi hai waise hi likh dijiyega together we commit together we commit together we commit to promote 
free open rule based order rule based order rooted in international law rooted in international law and undaunted by coercion c o e r c i o n agar kuch aur yaad nahi rahega to to promote free open rule based order par undaunted by coercion likhna bahut zaruri hoga undaunted by coercion means you cannot pressurize me to what i should do in the indo pacific region that is what is being said in the joint statement by all the four leaders now other than the naval exercises there were five other issues on which a joint statement a joint exercise was carried out by the four countries and that is one of the highlights of the meet which you should keep in mind whenever you talk of port so first was the first thing which they said was the covid vaccine so for covid 19 the countries committed for a 1.2 billion 1.2 billion doses of covid 19 vaccine would be provided by the four countries together and this would be in addition to the covaxin program and it is called what is it called it is called the covax program covax program to which these countries are already committed so other than the covax program in which they were supposed to provide free aid to the developing countries of the world this 1.2 billion doses of covid 19 would also be provided by the four countries together so it they say that us india japan and australia pledge to donate more than 1.2 billion doses of covid 19 vaccines in addition to the shot that the four countries already financed through the international vaccine access facility for low income countries known as the covax India is one of the largest vaccine. You talk about. But they are the most largest, largest vaccine producer in the world. India is. But this, the Covax program, in its addition, me 1.2 billion more COVID vaccine doses will be provided by the four countries together. Then there will be a quad infrastructure and coordination group. The second is this is your first. The second is there will be an infrastructure group. और ये इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ग्रुप क्या करेगा ये यहां की टेक्नोलॉजिकल एनहांसमेंट फॉर कंट्रीज हु आर लो इन टर्म्स ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फेसिलिटी ऑफ कोर्स व्हिच इज वन ऑफ द लीडिंग वुड बी इंडिया अनदर परहैप्स वियतनाम अनदर अनदर परहैप्स फिलीपींस दीस आर द कंट्रीज हु वुड हैव अ लो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फेसिलिटी एंड देयरफॉर द फोर कंट्रीज डिसाइडेड टुगेदर that they will form a group to provide high quality infrastructure facility and technical assistance to the countries in the indo pacific region the third point was of course climate change climate change to sabse zyada fashionable concept hai to sari countries ne commitment dikhaya ki wo climate change ke liye committed hai aur iske liye wo kya karengi wo a green shipping network they will form a green shipping network ab ye green shipping network mein kya hoga under this initiative what they are going to do is that they will take the major ports of the the countries and try them to bring them together to adopt technologies for zero carbon emission so they under the green shipping network club together or align together all the major ports of the four countries so as to bring in technologies in place which will result in zero carbon emission and they will work towards it 
other than that they said that for technologies like 5g for emerging technologies like 5g these group of countries have announced that they will they will establish a semiconductor supply chain initiative what will the quad countries do wo ek semiconductor supply chain initiative banayenge to identify the vulnerabilities and secure access to semiconductors and their vital components iska kya matlab hua ki wo map karenge ki kahan kahan semiconductors theek se nahi available hai aur 5g ki technology lane ke liye wo ye semiconductor supply bhi karenge इनके वाइटल कंपोनेंट्स को देखेंगे कि वो सब कंट्रीज को अवेलेबल हो फिर स्पेस दे आर गोइंग टू कोलैबोरेट सो दैट दे कैन शेयर डेटा ऑन इश्यूज ऑफ क्लाइमेट चेंज इश्यूज ऑफ डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट टू बी दीज फाइव हाइलाइट्स फॉर इंटरेक्शन एक्शन बिटवीन द फोर कंट्रीज फॉर कोर ये आखिरी ट्वेंटी सितंबर की जो समिट हुई है और पहली मैन रियल इंटरेक्टिव समिट हुई है उसके ये पांच परिणाम हैं जिनको आप सिंपल वर्ड्स में रख लीजिएगा एक एक लाइन अगर आपको आएगी तो बहुत है अब इसके अलावा आपको बताने की क्या जरूरत है कि व्हाट इज द स्टैंड ऑफ योर कंट्री इन द इंडियन पैसेफिक रीजन इस चीज को बताने के लिए फर्स्ट लेट लेट इज अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज इंडिया अप्रोच इन द इंडियन ओशन इंडिया एंड इंडो पेसिफिक रीजन इंडिया एंड इंडो पेसिफिक रीजन इंडिया सबसे ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट इसमें इश्यू कौन सा है फर्स्ट दैट इंडिया इज वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट डेमोक्रेसीज of this region that it is as susceptible to chinese threat as any other country more so because it has a territorial border with china China has an overarching influence in the Indo or the Asia Pacific region through through kis kis ke through its other organizations like the SCO the Shanghai Cooperation Organization plus the ASEAN it supports it supports countries who aid terrorism and that is what you are going to write you are not going to write pakistan please in none of the writings that i have read so far has this been mentioned category categorically and i have gone through four papers before i am speaking on quad so don't write pakistan just just write it supports countries who aid terrorism that china has over arcing in, in countries like bangladesh nepal and sri lanka jinki economies mein wo itna ghus chuke hain ki ab it is very difficult for india to to be able to untangle these countries from china so in sri lanka it is said that it is building that port what is the name of the port hambatata what is the name of the port in sri lanka bangladesh ham ban tota ये हैंड बैग टोटा जो एपोर्ट है इसमें बिल्ड इंडिया ने भी किया था पर इसको बनाने के लिए भी इंडिया को नहीं दिया गया और यहां से खाली इंडिया इज हंड्रेड माइल्स अवे फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम चाइना वंस इट टेक्स ओवर तो अब चाइना इंडिया के नेबर्स को कैसे सपोर्ट कर रहा है इट इज सबमरीन टू टू मियामार विच इज बर्मा 
It is providing frigate to Sri Lanka, equipments to Bangladesh and Thailand, all of which pose a security issue for India. In ASEAN, it is interfering by providing, becoming the largest trading partner with all the other countries. So there is an adverse trade relation with China vis-a-vis the Asian partners for India, or what is called a trade relationship between India, Asia, ASEAN countries, and China. That is another highlight of this region. Now, India is committed to two policies here, which are of importance to you. One is your look east policy. This may हमारे प्राइम मिनिस्टर का कहना है कि हमें अपने आस बुद्ध से दोस्ती करके रखना फर्स्ट इज द लुक ईस्ट पॉलिसी द सेकेंड इज सागर वॉट इज सागर सागर है कि सिक्योरिटी एंड ग्रोथ फॉर ऑल इन द This is the perspective which India has taken under the leadership of the present government that it believes in security and growth for all in the region. So what are the highlights of India's policy in the Indo-Pacific? First is equal as a right under international law to use the common space of air and water. It should be it should, it should be very clear to you that India is behaving like a neutral partner, that it has a democratic stand, unlike the other countries in the world, which have a biased approach towards China. India is only believing in a democratic setup in the in Pacific region. It has otherwise no vested interest. इन द इंडो पैसेफिक रीजन ऐसा नहीं है कि भारत देश कुछ बचाने के लिए या कुछ पाने के लिए इंडो पैसेफिक में इन्वेस्ट कर रहा है भारत का स्टैंड बहुत क्लियर है कि वो यहाँ पे सिर्फ एक डेमोक्रेटिक सिस्टम से काम करना चाहता है तो अगर आप इसकी पॉलिसी को हाईलाइट करेंगे तो आप उसमें कहेंगे कि इंडिया इज लुक टूवर्ड्स ईस्ट मतलब अपने नेबरिंग कंट्री से अच्छे रिलेशनशिप बना के रखे दूसरा सागर security and growth for all in the region ye iski second highlight hai third equal access equal access to all under international law of spaces for common spaces of sea and air ठीक है equal access as a right under international law to the use of common spaces on sea and air it is important second third point it is no it will be the fourth point it is important to establish connectivity in region based on respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity to aap se pitta likh dijiye it believes in sovereignty territorial sovereignty and territorial integrity of all countries bordering the indo pacific then it believes in multipolarity multipolarity kya hai security and peace for all abiding nature of the countries security and peace that all can co equally while pursuing their own policies and their own hegemonies india has no problem for grouping with other countries also it says says that there can be multipolarity why cannot there be a multipolarity there can be a multipolarity and so it says that there should be security and peace law abiding nature of all countries in and around the indo pacific then it talks about maritime domain awareness it talks about so it talks about multipolarity aap ye ek ek word bhi likhenge to chalega wo aapki position ko clear kar dega multipolarity this is not only for the indo pacific region as such 
it is india stand with its neighbors also so you can use this as a common platform wherever there are sea lines or sea shores you can talk of india stand on uh, on on sharing of waters or sharing of skies this is india stand for all countries so this can be a common thing at we have quad ke relationship mein aur indo pacific ke relationship mein isko yaad kijiye so there will be a multipolarity but other than that there will be what is called the maritime domain awareness maritime domain awareness अब मैरिटाइम डोमेन अवेयरनेस क्या है दैट इट इज नेसेसरी फॉर इंडियो पैसिफिक सिक्योरिटी मैरिटाइम डोमेन अवेयरनेस इंप्लाइज इफेक्टिव अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ एनी एक्टिविटी एसोसिएटेड विद द मैरिटाइम एनवायरनमेंट दैट कुड इंपैक्ट अपॉन द सिक्योरिटी सेफ्टी और इकोनॉमी एंड ऑफ द कंट्रीज सो यू शुड बी अवेयर वेर योर इंटरनेशनल वॉटर बाउंड्रीज एंड and where the other boundaries start and not only that you should have a respect for the maritime boundaries of each country so maritime domain awareness is means that you should stay within your boundaries and respect the domain awareness of the others then there is a one concept which they keep using which i do want to add for you and that is the word called the con सोशो सोशोशल मॉडल कॉन सोशोशल मॉडल सो वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ कॉन सोशोशल इट इज सीओ एन सी आई ओ सी आई ए टी आई ओ एन ए एल कॉन सोशियल मीन्स दैट ऑल अदर कंट exist in a democratic setup without one country taking a dominant stand iska matlab ki world ki sari democracies ko exist kar sakti hai chote chote group mein so long as they have a mutual respect for each so they can be groups of power but all can exist in peace so ye consensual model india propagate propagate karti hai इंडो पैसिफिक रीजन में आपको कुछ नहीं करना आप सिर्फ ये शब्द स्पेलिंग के साथ कर लीजिए और अपने आंसर भी कहीं लिख लीजिएगा आपका काम हो गया विद दैट वी ब्रिंग एन एंड टू क्वाड एंड द इंडो पैसिफिक पॉलिसी ऑफ इंडिया वीज ऑबिस अदर कंट्री सो वाइल यूएस वेस्टर्न बाई चाइना डील थ्रेट but at the same time it wants to not the dominance of any country but the democratic setup of each country needs to be respected is all that india is trying to say so far so good the quad is everybody done then we come to brics okay it's 820 should we call up the class today and do brics later or should we do it now So we now go into bricks, or shall we do it tomorrow? Okay, I think that I will do bricks tomorrow for you, and I'll call it a day here. I wanted to do both of them together, but this is going to take too much of time, and uh, uh, I also need a feedback on how I have taken a quad for you. अगर आपको इसमें कुछ बदलाव चाहिए, कुछ परिवर्तन चाहिए, तो आप उसके बारे में बोले. ताकि जब हम ब्रिक्स और दूसरी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन करें तो हम वो पर्सपेक्टिव भी अपना सकते हैं अगर आपको मेरी बात कहीं पे समझ ना आई हो तो उसका भी फीडबैक आप प्लीज ग्रुप पर लिखिएगा ताकि हम उस पर वर्क कर सके थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर टाइम वी कॉल इट डे टू डे वी डू ब्रिक्स टूमोरो और वेन एवर वी टेक द नेक्स्ट क्लास बट दिस इज हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू शेप अप इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन द वे वी टेक इट मोस्ट ऑफ इट इज फ्रॉम न्यूज पेपर कटिंग्स अगर आप में से किसी को लिंक चाहिए होगा तो आप बताइएगा मैं लिंक आप लोगों के साथ शेयर करू सो मच